Welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Got us a Rapid Ranger up here on the left. She's a big two wheel drive with a big four cylinder in it. Needs some front brakes, actually, needs some rear brakes also. We're gonna get started on the front, so stick around. Many two wheel peelers here in New York. It's a 2010 for those of you that are asking. And this brake job is one of my favorite type of brake jobs. Customer request. Felder called up, said he wanted everything. By everything, he meant everything. One of the new pads, rotors, and calipers in park and brake shoes on all four corners. So that's what I ordered. Don't even know the fella. All right. Ooh. So we're not even going to pull the caliper off the bracket because they're all going back for cores. And of course, we're doing all four, so I'm not even going to worry about the fluid dripping out of the hose because we're going to end up flushing the whole deal. Evidently he was having some problems with calipers hanging up. And I think he told me the back brakes are pretty well shot when I was told. So we'll take, once the whole caliper's off, I'm just going to pull the banjo bolt back out. Drain it into the bucket, let her drip. One thing I did not get was new grease caps. These, uh, these ones here have seen better days. So I ordered a couple. Won't have them until this afternoon, but that's okay. Looks like they've been victim of the screwdriver. But I should go get a hammer. I mean, it is only two feet away. So these are actually grease cap pliers. You don't use them that often. So there's that. Probably still reusable. If yours is beat up, I mean, the main, the important thing is, I mean, you could go around it with a ball peen hammer and just you know, straighten out this edge. These things are pretty cheap to buy, you know, if yours is real chowdered up. Something to think about for you. And we gotta get a pair of needle nose and we'll pull the bearings out. We don't even have to clean out these old wheel bearings. We got all brand new bearings for it too. The other side has some evidence of having been overhet. I'll show you. We'll take a look at that. Of course, I'm <laughs> somebody peeled up the uh, little wings on this little guy. It's not really how it's intended to be done, so we'll see if we can straighten them out without breaking them off. I'll show you when we go back together how this is supposed to be used. should only be maybe hand tight or maybe not usually you can spin them off with your fingers or with your pliers your needle nose there a little on the snug side so being that we're getting new bearings all we have to save is this outer washer here Make sure you don't lose that. If you're repacking your bearings, you know, you just got to pull the inner seal out, take the bearing out. Brake hose on this one's pretty, pretty clean from what I'm used to seeing. 
I just like to make sure they're, you know, real clean where the copper washer goes. Be careful using just a regular WYSI wheel on here. If you deform this edge and, you know, make it tapered, it's just never going to seal. down here from a distance. All right, beautiful. Just ran out of bearing grease too. I had to get a new tub of bearing grease. So we get to crack open a fresh tub. That's always fun. Oh, look, see at these rotors. However they come out. Must be the slip out the end. We did request the coated rotors all the way around, which is always a good choice. Especially in the salt belt. And the rotors come with new races, so to make sure if you're doing this, you know, you don't buy a whole bearing set. You can buy just the uh, cones, I guess it would be. The cups and the cones. We'll make sure these are right before I get too far. And they appear to be. packer sometimes when I got a little time I like the gold fashion let's see you gotta remember how to gold fashion here so get the old glob of grease right in the old palm and then you're gonna take your bearing and you're just gonna cut it into the edge of that grease just getting little bits at a time pushing it into your palm and I'll show you what happens when you keep pushing you see how it's coming up out of the bearing there, you see them three little pieces at the top squirting up between the needles. That's what you want to do. Just kind of keep going around, pressing it like that. Kind of an old school, your Mima probably did that. But you see how the grease is coming out between the actual bearings? That's what you want to do. That's, I guess, your classic packing the bearing. You know? And there's the compressor. You can just go all the way around. One of my first jobs as a kid. I remember it fondly in this shop. My Uncle Butch. He used to work here. Oh, Butch. He's let me pack wheel bearings because this used to be uh, a job that you did more often than you do nowadays. So I'm going to take a little bit extra of the blob I've got left, just put it on that bearing race. I'm right, just going to drop that bearing in there. Now that we know it's adequately packed. And make sure you're actually using wheel bearing grease. Some grease is not for use in wheel bearings. Just make sure you check that out. The little bearings, they pack quite a bit faster. All right, there's that. She's packed all the way around. So set that down. We'll take the other booger that we have. We'll wipe it inside the hub here. Oh, you got a little extra. All right. And then, look this off. We ought to be smart about it. I'm going to take and pack the other two while my hands are already a mess. I'm going to take, move this out of the way. 
Don't go in too awful difficult typically. I lied. I'm gonna go grab a seal driver. Usually these are pretty easy to go in. Some seals, I'll show you the, I use a little caution here sometimes, just get some grease up on that lip of that seal. Some seals have a spring on the inside, a retainer, and if you beat them in just with a, you know, a flat disc like I did, you take a chance of knocking the spring off. So on the inner lip, you know, the, these are just like, I don't know, they're a double lip seal, but they're just solid rubber, I guess for lack of a better term. Some of them will actually have a spring all the way around on the inside here. Now if you take and put that on there and you knock it in and that spring pops off, that's what you want to avoid. So I have a different set of seal drivers that you know fit the outer diameter and then they also fit the inner diameter to hold that spring in. You know, trick me ma taught me if you don't have a seal driver that holds the inner spring in, uh, take some grease and pack this whole inner lip and that'll keep the spring from popping out if you're just sticking it on there and driving it in. So free tip Friday for you in case you're ever doing that and you want to know how to keep the spring from popping out. I just want to get a little bit of lube up on this bearing race. Make sure there's some grease in the hub. How much grease do you put in the hub? Well, nobody really knows the answer to that question. You talk to five people, you'll get five different answers. I just make sure there's some in there. Just a little bit of grease up on that where that seal's gonna ride. I'm taking slipping on, be careful not to smash up your seal. And then usually before I put it up on the seal, I'll spin her a little bit and you'll feel it slip right on. And our washer, it's got two flat spots in it. We'll stick that on and I'll spin the nut back on. Now if you're a factory specs guy such as myself. How do you tighten these properly? Well, if you look in the book, the forward book, it'll tell you to tighten this nut down to 21 foot pounds and then back it off 175 degrees, which is loose. And then it will tell you while rotating the hub, tighten it to 18 inch pounds. So that's essentially finger tight. You can easily do 18 inch pounds with your fingers. Now, this is as debatable as to how much grease to put in the hub. Uh, essentially these are finger tight so usually I'll, I'll kind of jam them down make sure the bearings you know seated well give it a spin make sure it's not you know any grease inhibiting you loose her up a couple times and then basically it's just finger tight that's it zero lash you want to just take just take the play out of the bearing and then you're done in the castle nut cage unit you're going to go over it's 12 point going on a six pointed bolt here and you're just going to spin it around until you find the notches that line up that give you the ability to stick the cutter pin through. We'll stick in a new pin. The next most debatable topic in the world, what way to bend the cutter pin. So usually on front wheel bearings, I take them and I bring them up around down like so. And that keeps it from ever walking back out into the cover. I've seen these come in where they're actually the end of them is cut right out because the cotter pin has been bent out front over the spindle and a piece of it's just barely touching this and eventually it does burn a hole right through it or it chowders up a bunch of metal in there and then you've got you know metal floating around in your bearing so whatever way you do it do it the right way. So I usually go like so I want to just give her a little squeeze, make sure the ears are in on it. And like I say, that way there it prevents itself from turning, I guess if that makes sense. I'm going to wait for the new caps. 
I'm gonna keep the old ones because the new ones coming are made from a company that I don't really particularly care for and their products rarely fit. But we're gonna see if they do fit good. If not, we're gonna straighten up the old ones and use them. That is done. By the way, Napa, not a sponsor of today's show. Which caliper do we have here? Are they labeled? This must be the other side. That is for the left. This one is for the right. I'm going to take get my cores in the boxes so I don't mix them up. So this one I was going to show you on the left side caliper. You see the edge of those pads? You see how they're kind of white and ashy? This is what brake pads will look like if they've been overhead severely. Uh, if they get more severe, you'll see the white edge will start to travel in towards the back and plate more and the pad will actually start to crumble. You can probably see it a little bit through the top there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I can't see what you're saying, but anyhow, that white edge, telltale sign. These babies got smoking. And if you look at the rotor, the rotor will also start to change color. It'll get a real orangish hue to it. I don't know if orangish is the right word, but it'll look grossly different than the other side. It has orangish, reddish color to it. The rust will look different. Usually the surface of the friction or the friction surface of the rotor will be real streaky in a lot of cases. Something to keep in mind. I'm going to use the hardware that comes with the pads. These are usually a little bit nicer hardware. They have the Quiet Glide hardware. They've got like rubber-ish type backing on them. I'll show you. So they're black on one side, shiny on the other. So I like to use these instead of the hardware that came with the calipers. Specially formulated inner and outer pads. Fancy. Da, 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 da. We'll start with one, because it doesn't matter which one. This is the right one. Get it. Take and do everything that we normally do except clean off the rust. Now I have noticed over the years that these Eclipse calipers that Napper sells last a long time, or at least the black coating on them does, which is great in our area. Anything you can do to keep them from getting all crusty, premature crusting. I'm going to take and we're going to slip our hardware in there. I'll show you. It's got to fit up into the top there, okay? So when you stick it in, go the other way, fella. I usually come down, I'll push that piece up in first. You know what I'm saying? So we'll get her lined up. We'll push her up in. And you got to make sure that the piece that goes up in here, where the rotor is going to come through here, definitely make sure that's seated all the way. Uh, what we'll see, we'll get customer complaints of, you know, my brakes are squealing all the time. And, you know, oftentimes we'll take the wheel off and we'll look and we'll see a shiny spot all the way around the outside edge of the rotor. And usually the hardware has broken or, you know, there's rust jacking underneath it, causing it to kind of come down and hit. So we'll grab one of our inner pads. Now these are going to have a little spring tension down here, so you're going to have to kind of manipulate that. in there, little fella. Oh, dang it, went right past it. Have to kind of push that down with your thumb. Yeah, careful on brake hardware. This stuff is wicked sharp. Oh, you ding dong, you did it again. Third time's a charm. <laughs> or the fourth time. Fourth time always gets it, every time, guaranteed. There, baby. All right. And then you just want to make sure that the pad moves, you know, freely with your fingers. And that 
that's it. Get us an outer formulated pad. Stick her in. Sometimes you can put them in and just rotate them a little bit, get past that spring tension. And then, like I said, just make sure that they move freely. And we'll push them to their inner limits here a little bit. Oh, don't push it past. All right. We'll get our caliper loaded up. Get her lubed up. I see they're starting to come back with the loaded brake caliper. I've been seeing a lot of them in the uh, catalog as I'm looking up parts. The online catalog, folks. Come on now. I'm still not using the old paper copies. Back in the day, loaded calipers were, were pretty popular. But I've also noticed that the cost, or at least my costs on them, is about sometimes on average of $25 to $30 more per caliper for a loaded caliper. Now a loaded caliper, these are considered semi-loaded with brackets. Loaded caliper comes with pads, you know, ceramics or metallics, whatever you want. But if you add up the price of two calipers, let's say it's an extra $50 or $60, uh, you're better off just buying the pads yourself because then that way there, you know, even though these pads are $50 or $60, you can at least get the pads that you want. So that's what I always do. So I'm going to straighten this up. We want to make darn sure that they've got lube on the caliper pins. This one is a touch on the dry side. We'll give her just a little extra down here. Just to be sure. Upside down. Bring it in. Now these already have a little blue Loctite on them. Torque them back to impact specs. Reach down, pop your pads up straight. Get a napkin. good fight with that little thing for about the next half hour Copper washers, so we'll get those. Stick them on there. Stick that on there. Make sure it threads in. And it does for the most part. And that's it. We'll go back on the car. Take and rotate that out. Make sure we got the right caliper. The right caliper for the right side. Got the bolts here, I'm going to apply just a smidge of Loctite. Keep it factory, you know. Some vehicles, depending on what I'm working on, I apply a whole bunch of never sees, especially them Japanese cars. Them suckers tend to get stuck in the bracket when the thunder's hitting there. Shouldn't be anything else because of the way I got the. Gotta push our pins in here a little bit, fella. There we go. Now we're talking. All right. We'll get the bolts back in it. Wherever they go. Tighten them up very tight. You know, that baby's falling off. We had a few cars come in over the years with a noise in the front end and see the caliper just about cutting the rim in half. One of the bolts falls out, you know, and it gets wedged over against the rim, and they just keep on trucking. We'll hook 
hook up the banjo. This one really doesn't look like a banjo. And I probably won't show the bleeding in this video until we do the rear brakes, but it's almost eight o'clock. I almost got to open my doors and deal with the public. And I've already got some appointments waiting. So what we'll do is we'll chop this up into a few parts. We'll do the back brakes in another part. Some other things he wants done to the truck, if time allows. Maybe we'll get some other videos on that. So when you're putting your brake hose on, make sure you don't have a curly cue in it. I call them the old pigtail. See, a lot of brakes come in like that. And they work just fine, but sometimes when you turn all the way one way, it really stresses the hose. And you don't want your hose all stressed out. So we're gonna tighten this up just enough to make a good seal, crush down the washers. About that tight right there. Once it's on, you should be able to move your caliper back and forth freely. That's critical. And we're gonna keep trucking. Like I say, stick around for part two. Some of you may have the question, who haven't watched a lot of SMA videos, why did we apply grease behind the abutment clips? If you're not familiar with our channel, or the great state of New York with all its salt, that is where we get the majority of the problems, is behind the abutment clips. It rusts, it squeezes, the pads squeeze, and things seize up. The hardware that we use on these is stainless steel. I don't find it necessary to grease the face of them because they never rust, and I don't ever have a problem there. Always behind it. Why do we grease the ears of the caliper? Same situation. You start to get a lot of rust buildup between the caliper and the pad, so that slows that down. Plus, in the case where you have metal pistons, now these are phenolic, aka plastic, you always want to grease any metal to metal contact except, you know, obviously the friction contact because that's going to cut down on your squealing. So that should answer that question you just typed in the comment box. So we're going to leave this video with that, folks. Stick around for part two and three and four, however many parts there are to the Rapid Ranger rebuild. That's the front, got to do the back. We'll flush them all out. We're going to be doing park and brake shoes back there too at customer request. Get those taken care of so I'll show you how to do them. They can be a little bit of a pisser because they're behind the axle. And uh, we're going to keep motoring. Got to get started with my day. Go down there in the comment box. Leave your questions, comments, criticisms, concerns. And while you're down there, subscribe, ring the bell, and all that stuff. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.